You gotta test your ads. You know you have to test your ads, right? You should always be testing your Google ads, but how do you actually do it? Everybody's always telling you, you gotta be testing your Google ads copy. You have to be doing these tests to make your account better, but how do you go about testing your ads in a structural way where you can have the confidence you're receiving from your ad test so that you can apply that to your account and actually move your account forward to get more leads, get more sales, and to grow your business or your client's business. Today's video was actually requested by Chang down in the comments section. And if you have future video requests, be sure to drop them in the comments box down below and I can make a video just like this on your question as well. In today's video, I really wanna talk about what's worked best for me when it comes to testing Google Ads copy. Specifically, we're gonna talk about how to set up your Google Ads test how to go about implementing the test, and then key things to keep in mind when analyzing your results, so that way you can continue to test in the most quickest and efficient way possible so you can actively be growing your account. Let's get right into it. Hey guys, Sylvie Perez here from Ad Conversion, helping you solve your lead generation problems and grow your business with digital advertising. If you're new here, make sure to click on that subscribe button. And if you're not already, be sure to check out my new Facebook group on Google Ads Lead Generation, and you can get involved with that and check it out in the description box down below. First things first, let's talk about how you can set up your Google Ads copy test. Now, when it comes to testing your Google Ads copy, when it comes to split testing, it's also known as A-B testing, what you're really trying to do is you're just trying to test one variable at a time. So you usually have a control and a variant, and the control is your first original version of your ad in this case, and your variant is the change that you made. Now, the key thing when it comes to testing and split testing is you don't wanna change too many things at the same time. For example, let's say you have your control variable, which is your standard ad, and then in this split test, you wanna test one variable, which is a new headline. But if in the case you change the headline, the description, the path, the display URL, the final URL, everything, and this ad performs better, you're not gonna know which one of those changes actually resulted in the results that you wanted, that forward momentum, better conversion rate, better cost per conversion, better click-through rate, whatever it might be that determines success for your account. Now, when it comes to testing your Google Ads, you have a lot of options in terms of what you can test. So with that in mind, you wanna test one thing at a time to really make sure that that thing that you changed is really driving that performance. So let's give you some examples of things you can test in your Google Ads copy. First and foremost is your headlines. You can test your headline one, two, and threes. You can test your description one and your description two. You can also test your path one and your path two, as well as you can test the actual ad type. For example, you can test responsive search ad versus expanded text ads. You can test call only ads versus expanded text ads. So you have a lot of options in terms of variables that you can play with to compete against your control, which was your original ad. All right, now that you've decided what it is exactly that you wanna test, in your Google Ads copy, whether that's the headline, description, ad type, whatever it might be, you know what your control is and you're gonna change one element in your variable to test against it. Now let's talk about how you actually implement the test so that way you can compete your control versus your variant and let it be able to battle against each other, so to speak, so then you can analyze it and understand which one is performing better. Now when it comes to Google Ads and the Google Ads platform, we have a couple different ways on how we can go about implementing ad tests. The first one we could do is called ad variations. So ad variations are really good if you wanna just make one change across multiple ads in multiple campaigns in your account. The first way you can start testing your Google Ads copy is using ad variations. Now, if you're not familiar, ad variations, I personally don't use these as often. Ad variations, where I have found them to be the most beneficial, is when you're trying to test one thing across multiple ads in multiple campaigns across your account. This is usually only more beneficial for people who have a lot of campaigns and they just wanna test one variation of a specific ad across all of them at the same time. That's usually when ad variations are really good. Here's a real example of what an ad variation experiment looks like. This is one that I actually launched recently on August 26 for a client of mine. And obviously I have to have the information blurred out because this is sensitive information. But I just wanted to give you an example of what a live ad variation would look like. So in this specific case, what I am testing is calls to action. 
So if in the case you have the same call to action across multiple ads and multiple campaigns, instead of having to create new ads in every single campaign and you just wanna test that one variable, ad variations is a really good way you can do that. So on the left-hand side, we have the modified ad. This is the new variation that we created with the new call to action. And then on the right-hand side is the original ad with the original call to action. And then on the right-hand side of that, you can see all the metrics for the different variations. So for example, if you're a local business and the call to action that you use across all your campaigns is request an appointment, maybe you wanna see how changing that to call us now affects performance. Does call us now work better than request an appointment? If in the case you're a SaaS company and you wanna test how does get a demo compare against get a free product tour or get a free account, whatever that might be, this is where ad variations would come into play. Or maybe you wanna test if you change the path one URL that you're always using, that path one, if you change the copy across that shares that one path copy across all your campaigns, if changing that makes a difference in performance. So really the key thing I wanna drive home here is one change across multiple campaigns. That's really the key power of ad variations. Now let's go ahead and talk about how you can actually set up an ad variation yourself. Go into your Google Ads account, and then on the bottom left-hand side, click on Drafts and Experiments, and then click on Ad Variations. Then click New Ad Variation, and then it's gonna pop up the Configure tool where you can set up your ad variation. Now you got a couple options here when it comes to setting up your ad variation. You can apply it to all campaigns that meet the criteria that you set, or you can get very specific and select certain campaigns. That's up to you. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna say all campaigns and we're gonna test a different call to action. So from there, you gotta choose what kind of ad do you wanna test? Is it an expanded text ad or is it a responsive search ad? So I'm gonna set expanded text ads. And then from here, this is very important, is filter ads. This is where you gotta set the condition of if in the case, especially if you selected all campaigns, and you want it to only apply to very specific cases, this is where you're gonna really set up that filtering to make sure that Google can only apply the variation to the, the specific use case, the specific ad variation that you wanna test. So for example, if I know across all my ads in my campaigns that I have the call to action of get an appointment in the headline three, and I wanna test how that does against call us today, I would set the filter to headline three contains, or it could be equals, but you just have to make sure that you write it exactly like it is in your original ad or it won't work. And I'm gonna say anything that says, and let's just use the example of get a demo. So it's gonna say any ad in my campaign, across all campaigns, any text ad that has in the headline three get a demo, they are eligible for this ad variation. And you're gonna click continue. And then you have some different options on how you can implement that variation. You can use find and replace, which is literally gonna find a specific text that you wanna replace it with, or you can do update text. This is if in the case that you wanna test any ad with that headline three of get a demo and you wanna completely change the ad and test a new variation, you can do that with update text, or you can just use swap headline one and two, which is literally just what it sounds like. It'll move the headlines one and two around and you get to see which, if that has an impact in performance. Me personally, I always use find and replace and I'm always testing one specific thing. I'm usually using ad variations to test calls to action more than anything. Then from there, just click find and replace. And again, we're gonna test, does saying get a demo work better than let's say get a free account? So I'm gonna say anything with get a demo and again, make sure you type it the same way and headline three, if the text has get a demo in headline three, replace that with get a free account. And then we're gonna click continue. So what this is gonna do, again, we set up that criteria, we set up that filtering, so only ads with the headline three of containing get a demo are eligible for this variation. Then from there, we set up the find and replace filter, so anything with get a demo in headline three will be replaced with get a free account, and we're gonna be able to see does get a free account perform better as a call to action than get a demo. And then we're gonna click continue. You can give it a name. I'm gonna call it CTA test. And we just call it free account versus demo. 
You can set a start date, you can set an end date, that's all up to you. But the most important thing is leave your experiment split to 50%. That way it's an A-B test, you're testing 50% against this versus 50% of this. And then just click create variation. And then once you click on the actual test itself, you're gonna have this screen where you can see your modified ads on the left, your original ads on the right, and then you're gonna be able to see all the different performance metrics for each variation. And very easily, you can apply one change across multiple ads and multiple campaigns and just see how that one variation has an effect on performance. The second way you can implement ad testing is through campaign experiments. This one is probably the least favorite of mine when it comes to ad testing, because with campaign experiments, it's more so if you wanna make a lot of changes at once and you're not just trying to test, for example, ad types, but you could as well. If you, if you wanted to change, for example, three ads in one campaign, three ads in the other, and you wanted to test them, you can do that with a campaign experiment because you can test multiple ads at once versus with ad variation, you can only test one change at a time. The second way you can test your Google ads copy is using campaign experiments. Now campaign experiments were not designed with ad copy testing in mind, but I just wanted to include it in this video just so you know that for whatever reason, should you want to go down this route or just use it for ad copy testing, you know, if that's going to allow you to test confidently, then this is an option that you have available. Campaign experiments are usually a lot better for what the name implies, campaign level changes. So testing like bid strategies, testing ad schedules, testing device device level targeting, testing certain demographic targeting, testing certain in-market audiences that you want to target, things like that. Usually those are better ways to go with campaign experiments. But if in the case that you just want to have that nice experiment view where you can be able to see what the confidence interval is for your test. So you can see, for example, maybe in your original campaign, you have your original ads. And then in the experiment campaign, you have your new ads that you want to test. You can do that. You can use a campaign experiment to test your ad copy should you like. I actually created a full video on how to create campaign experiments for the sake of trying to keep this video under 30 minutes because this video in itself can be really long if I go into that too. Just check out that video on how to create campaign experiments if you want to do it that way. Again, it's not the way I personally do it. I use the last method, which is what I'm gonna talk about, which is using labels. But I just want you to know that it is an option and should some specific case come up where you wanna do a campaign experiment to test ad copy, that is available to you. And then last but not least is using labels. And this is my favorite way and this is the way I personally use to do ad testing. I use labels and pivot tables. That kind of rhymes, labels and pivot tables. And that's how I like to test ads. And I'm gonna show you how to use each one of these methods so that you can decide which one makes more sense for you on how you wanna implement your ad tests. The third and final way you can test your Google Ads copy is using labels and pivot tables. This is the way that I personally enjoy testing copy the most and the one that I use the most frequently out of all the options that I showed you in this video. So to get started, go to the ads that you wanna test in whatever ad group in whichever campaign. And in the actual ad columns, you need to make sure that you have the label column set up. So if you don't see label in your columns, just click columns, modify columns, and then under attributes, just select label and click apply. The main thing is you need to have this label feature here because we're gonna label our experiment ad and we're gonna label our control ad. So for example, Let's say I wanted to test these two ads. Let's say this ad was the one that I had first, and then this is the new ad that I want to test it against. Now for whichever ads that you had before, I would call those your legacy ads. And then whatever new ads that you have, those would be the actual ones that you're testing against those legacy ads. So first and foremost, we're going to label our legacy ad. So I'm going to click on that ad. I'm going to click label. I'm going to click new label. And then I'm going to put ad test colon, the today's date. So today's date of the filming of this video is 9320. And then I'm gonna put a little dash, and then I'm just gonna put legacy. And this tells me that this was my original ad. If in the case you have three ads in this ad group and you have two legacy ads and one new ad that you're testing, then just label the two original ads as legacy. So ad test 9320 legacy, and I'm gonna click create and apply it. So now we labeled this ad, this is our legacy ad. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna label the new ad. So in this case, let's say we're only testing the headline three in this case, right? So let's just say label, new label, I'd go ad test, same thing, 
today's date, 9320. And then I would say this is an expanded text ad and we're doing, let's say headline three, right? ETA H3. You can name it whatever makes sense to you. As long as the main thing that you, whenever, however you want to set up your labels, the main thing is that you know what your original ad was and you know what the new ad was and you know the date that you started the test and what it is you're testing. So in this case, let's say we're testing an expanded text ad and we're testing the headline three. So I'm going to click create. If I was testing a responsive search ad, I would just put RSA for responsive search ad and so on and so forth. So now that these two ads are labeled, I can go ahead and download this into an Excel CSV file and create a pivot table off of this data. Now to show you what this looks like in Excel, once you download that Excel report, I actually went ahead and I pulled an actual Excel report from an actual client of mine that I ran an ad experiment testing expanded text ads versus responsive search ads from July 17th to August 17th. So I ran the experiment for one month and I went ahead and I deleted the columns that, that show that client's private information. That way I could use this as an example for you guys to show you what a real test looks like using the label method. But once you download that keyword report, and by the way, if you want a video on how to use Excel, how to create pivot tables and that kind of stuff, just drop a comment down below and I can create a full video on that. I'm gonna just kind of go through this pretty quickly just so you can see what it looks like, but that could be a whole video on its own. I think this video is, I feel like this one video that, that you're watching right now is probably already like 30 something minutes, but I'm hoping you're getting tremendous value from it. And if you are, be sure to smash that, that like button down below, okay? So once you download the Excel report, you're just gonna have to clean up the, the table so that you can put it into a pivot table. So I'm just gonna do that really quickly. Just gonna clean up all these total rows down below. And then from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and create this into a table, and then I'm gonna summarize it with a pivot table. The main thing in terms of the columns that you need is you need the label column, and then obviously you need the performance metrics column, so like clicks, conversions, cost per conversion, conversion rate, etc. So then from there, I'm gonna click summarize with pivot table, and then I'm gonna put label and conversions. And you can see here, and I'm gonna get rid of the blanks, and you can see here on the left, I had 80.38 conversions. So let's just say 80 conversions for the legacy expanded text ads. And I had 81 for responsive search ads. So they're pretty much neck and neck. You can also create a percentage filter. You just do a percentage formula really quickly so you can see which one performs better. And you can see it's about 50-50. So in this case, the after a month of testing expanded text ads versus responsive search ads from a conversion volume standpoint these were 50 50 so now i'm testing this for another month to get enough uh, to get more data so that way i can see all right which one is actually the one that's going to win now that you understand how to implement your ad test let's talk about analyzing the results and key things to keep in mind now first and foremost most of you just don't have a large enough sample size, meaning enough clicks, enough impressions, whatever it is you're testing, to even have statistical significance. I want you to understand that. Don't overthink it. A lot of you guys who have smaller accounts or medium-sized accounts that are not doing a lot of volume, you just don't have enough sample size to really have true statistical significance. So with that being said, what I want you to keep in mind is you're not looking for an absolute. There are no certainties in life, okay? You can have a confidence interval that's pretty high, but at the end of the day, that doesn't mean that's an absolute thing, right? Life happens, things go wrong. Look at 2020, <laughs> am I right? So with that being said, what you're looking for when analyzing your experiments and your results is you are looking for directional correlation. So you just want a good enough result. You can have enough data behind as much as possible depending on your account that where you know confidently, it may not be absolutely, but at least confidently, that this is the direction you wanna head in. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for that directional correlation. Don't try to find an absolute and you know have 100% certainty that this change is the right change because most of us just don't have enough sample size. That's just the God's honest truth. And on top of that, most of us are not even statisticians to be able to use p-value analysis and confidence intervals to really do the amount of data analysis and research to actually get true statistical significance. So with that being said, we need to keep it simple, we need to be agile, and we need to be quick. So run your test, give it enough time 
So get, decide on that time frame based on your account and your amount of volume. I would say at least 100 clicks per ad test, and that'll give you a decent enough sample size just to get that directional correlation. Because if you get 100 clicks on your ad, that's gonna give you enough data to be able to understand more or less which ad is performing better and which one you wanna go with and which one you wanna pause and then create a new test off of that. Last but not least, when it comes to ad testing, I wanna talk about something that everyone has a difference of opinion on and my opinion is just my opinion and it might be controversy to some, but this is honestly just what I think. When it comes to ad rotation, so if you're not familiar, ad rotation is the way you allow Google to serve your ads. So you can allow them to optimize based on what they think is gonna work best, or you can allow them to rotate your ads evenly. When it comes to ad testing, I understand that you wanna give each variable equal amount of impressions and volume and things like that, and that's why people say you should rotate your ads evenly. But I personally like to not rotate my ads evenly and I like to optimize them and let Google optimize my ads and rotate them based on their machine learning. And the reason why is because most people are not disciplined enough to really have that setting on rotate ads evenly and to be checking their account in a frequent enough amount of time to be able to make the adjustments. The other thing as well is we're living in a world and we're moving more and more into a world where you need to start learning how to lean into the algorithm. If you run any Facebook ads, you already know the power of this and Google ads is gonna be no difference. I personally have found better results over the long term with my accounts running ads, not on an even basis, but having Google optimize them for performance. As well as, especially when you're doing a lot of automated bidding already, if you're doing automated bidding and then you're trying to rotate your ads evenly, you're really gonna be cutting Google's knees out from under them and you really just wanna lean into that algorithm and allow Google to rotate your ads as they see fit. Now again, you're looking for directional correlation. You're thinking about it too hard and you're stressing about it too hard. You're looking for directional correlation. You're not looking for absolute certainty. There's just no such thing. And most of you just don't have the volume again to have absolute certainty. So if you can have your ad setting to rotate for performance and that's gonna improve your results over the long term, that's better in my opinion than having your ad set to rotate evenly and then it hurts your results over the macro over the long term because you're you know, you're kind of like restricting Google and not allowing Google to serve your ads they see fit. You have to understand Google is really smart and their artificial intelligence and their machine learning technology is only getting smarter. And Google's machine learning technology, when you create a new ad, it has signals that it sends and it already understands based on your ad, they run like little mini tests with the machine learning where you create a new ad and if you have that setting place, where they're gonna start showing your ads a little bit and then based on the response that they're getting, they'll start to show it more and more. And if they realize that your ad doesn't have what it takes to go the distance, then they're not gonna show that ad as frequent as the control ad you have. So when it comes to ad rotation, I personally, again, I like to go for directional correlation, even if I'm not as statistically significant or as absolute as possible because my ads aren't rotating evenly, I personally am all about the bigger picture and getting more performance and more growth out of my accounts and making my life as easy as possible. So I personally always opt in for rotating ads for performance. That is it for this video. I hope you got tremendous value out of it. If you're not already, if you could subscribe to the channel, that'll help me out a ton. And if you can give this video a thumbs up, that'll help me get it ranked higher in the search engines. And if you wanna get involved and you wanna join the community, I just created a new Facebook group on Google Ads Lead Generation, and that'll be in the description box down below. I would love to have you be a part of the group and be able to ask questions and interact and get to know you more and interact on a deeper level. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.